Well, welcome back. With this movie, we're going to take a look at some of the shiny new features of Anime Studio 5 Pro. This is the only movie in this series where I will aim at squarely at people that already use this program. Or somebody that may be very familiar with animation, but are simply looking at Anime Studio and going, hmm, I wonder if I should add this to my tool set. What's this program all about? So with that, I'm going to say there are a few disclaimers for this movie only, not the whole series. And that is, is that if you don't understand something that I'm saying or I'm using terminology that doesn't make any sense, don't panic. We'll cover all these things in significant detail as the series progresses so that if you come back to this movie as a beginner, you'll understand everything we're talking about. But again, this movie is specifically for folks that already have some experience here with the program. So let's take a look at some of these new enhancements. One of uh, the most subtle but uh, most powerful enhancements happens to be you can now customize your user interface. Now this may seem a little boring and a little pedestrian, but if you happen to work with more than one monitor, like most pro environments do, you can now drag around your tool palettes, resize them, apply them to different monitors, and really maximize your screen usage much better. Additionally, for those types of animations where you're working with subtle colors, you can now customize your user interface colors. Again, seems like another one of those little um, enhancements. It's rather boring. But when you're working with something like subtle colors, being able to change your user interface to a neutral gray is incredibly advantageous. Nice time saver so you can make sure your colors are being balanced well. Additionally, there is now the ability to adjust the display resolution of your animation. And I'm not talking about monitor resolution or display, but just in your program right now, you can leave it uh, set in an economical mode as you're just simply getting shapes and motion in place so the screen redraws real fast, it doesn't take a lot of computer horsepower, or you can go ahead and have a very realistic, completely rendered preview while you're working on your animation. This is actually a tremendous advantage now that you can see exactly how your animation is going to look like or your characters, your stylings, while you work on the file. That's a nice little thing. Additionally, we've got some tool enhancements that I didn't really call out separately. We'll just see those as we begin working. Things like the ability to hide edges of shapes, things like that. Auto welding, where points come together and just match automatically. Some really, really smart things that accelerate your creating characters and shapes in this program. Something very new and very powerful to this program now is scripting. Scripting allows you to go ahead and create some very complex type of interactions or functions with animated pieces like snow, rain, smoke, explosions, things that would normally take quite a significant amount of time to go ahead and keyframe individually. You can now simply invoke a script and for the duration of your animation segment, these complex motions will continue. So characters walking through snow, no problem, the snowflakes will keep falling. Additionally, this Lua script language is very easy to learn if you want to learn it and like doing that. And it's part of the whole program now. So you can create your own custom tools if you like, if you find yourself wanting a tool that's not there. Some great enhancements in the timeline as well. You can now um, apply some what are called actions. I'll get to those in just a second and see them. You can see the waveforms for your soundtracks now that you can work with audio in this program. So syncing up motion to sound effects or lip syncing, super easy to do now. You can also hide channels and layers and make them visible again just to use your workspace more intelligently. For those of you that deploy solutions to the web, you can now have improved flash export formats, the .swf format. The files are smaller, they're better quality, curves are curvier, uh, less straight edge or truncated curves which is great. Also, if you do anything with gradient fills like skies or grasses, fields receding into the distance, well, you can export that now and it goes right into the flash format. You don't have to recreate that at all. Huge time saver. You can also export uh, things in the ping format if you want to or JPEG. Ping is great because it's got that alpha mask with it. So you can now do that and have great support with it. And if you've been working with your soundtrack in the program and choose to export it in the flash format, Soundtrack goes right out as an MP3 file. Very nice. Smoke and Hot, new addition to this program, is the ability to work with 3D layers now and 3D content. If you happen to have a program like Lightwave or Maya or Poser or Poser Pro, Daz Studio, Carrera, you can take 
anything you create in those programs and bring it into a 3D layer. Supports texturing. Now the animation's a little bit different. You can't do quite as robust of animation as you would with a full 3D package, but you can do some amazing things here in Anime Studio and it saves you some huge time when you're creating characters that may have a lot of detail that you would have for 3D. We've got a couple little categories here that I just tacked on to the end. Actions are a great new feature of this program. That's where you can create something like walk cycles, where you get the one foot in front of the other, save that as a separate little action, and apply that. Sometimes it's called nonlinear animation. And you can have one character just walking and walking and walking and never have to keyframe all those steps. Great tool. Same thing for facial expressions. Styles are now available, and styles are where you may have a certain thick and thin type of look to a line filled with a certain pattern, with a certain special effect applied to it. Hey, you can save those off now as their own little items and then recall that style on new artworks. It just helps you with consistency as you create multiple animations or animation segments for your movies. We do have something very nice now, improved bones, where you can work with bone dynamics. It will automatically create some very realistic type of motion when you apply a base motion to it. You can also work with the new bone binding schemes, which save a ton of time in terms of how you set up and rig your characters. And then finally, some nice, nice rendering enhancements that allow you to export out in uh, NTSC color safe modes for any type of television deployment. Brush strokes and things like that are now applied to shape outlines. Man, that is just great. Better layer masking, you get layer blending modes just like you do in Photoshop or Adobe After Effects or Final Cut Pro. You can apply those same layer blending modes now. Some great improvements. You're going to be excited as we go through this program.